Hey everyone, welcome back. Hopefully everyone's having a good week. If you're new to the channel, I post videos about my investing journey every week and I also talk about strategies and stocks to consider every week as well. So if you're interested, definitely take a look at some of my older videos. Um, in this video, I'll be talking about one simple strategy that netted 42% per annum excluding taxes between 2011 and 2020. Now this strategy has nothing to do with the ASX. It applies to anyone in the world that has access to leveraged US ETFs. So if you're in Australia, you can use Stake uh, to do this strategy or any other broker that offers this product as well. So just a heads up, this video isn't going to be sexy, so don't fall asleep because I don't have any fancy graphs or pictures, but it will appeal to your future eyes once you look at your bank account in the next 10 to 20 years. So I'd recommend to listen carefully and not to shut your eyes. I'll try my best to keep it entertaining as well. Now I want to put up this chart and give you some insight and then go into detail about how the strategy itself, about the strategy itself, sorry. And um, so you guys fully understand what the risks and rewards are and how you can go about implementing it in your own portfolio. So the strategy is 50% TQQ, 50% TMF or 50% UPRO and 50% TMF are rebalancing every quarter. All right, don't exit the video yet now that you know the strategy. Um, for those that don't know what TQQ is, it's a leveraged ETF that aims to perform three times the NASDAQ. UPRO is three times the S&P 500 and TMF is three times the 30-year Treasury bonds. I don't want to beat around the bush, so I'll try to make everything as concise as possible and emphasize the key points that you should know. So the cage R, which is compound annual growth rate of this strategy is 42% per annum compared to the S&P, which returned 12%. And if we have a look at um, the investing legend Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, the cage R was 8.8%, which is even lower than the S&P 500. Now, let's say you made regular contributions of $1,000 per month to the strategy. You would have had a handsome balance of 1.2 million. That's crazy, right? And not many people know about this strategy or let alone what leveraged ETFs are. And I'm guessing if you're watching this, uh, less than a handful of you guys would even know or would even have implemented this strategy already. So this is what motivated me to create this video. Now let's backtrack a little bit. Do you guys remember that the S&P 500 fell a whopping 34% uh, from peak to trough this year? Well, this strategy made 65% while the S&P is still down 2% year to date. So what I did was I used a portfolio back tester. Uh, I'll put the link in the description so you guys can play around with it. Um, it shows the results of this strategy. I created a simple table with percentages um, so you guys can have a comparison. Uh, but let's look at the graph. It's a bit more appealing to the eyes. We can see that in 2011, the strategy destroyed Berkshire and S&P 500 returns. Uh, this didn't only happen once, it happened in 2012, 2014, 2017, 19, and 2020. Now that's pretty frequent if you ask me. Um, on the down years, uh, so in 2013, 15, 16, and 18, the strategy didn't do too badly either. Now that I have your attention, I want to go through a few things. Um, how does leverage ETFs work? Misunderstandings about leverage ETFs and also key elements to make this strategy work. Now, I found an article on Motley Fool that describes how leveraged ETFs work in a nutshell. Uh, leveraged ETFs uses debt and or derivatives to generate double or triple the daily performance of certain index or asset class, uh, typically amplifying daily returns and it can be either short or long. Now, let's talk about the dangers of um, leveraged ETF investing. The article warns that long-term investors should be cautious of leveraged ETFs. He also says leverage ETFs has higher than average expense ratios compared to normal, um, the normal S&P 500 ETF, which is true. Uh, you can imagine borrowing money to increase your leverage comes with a cost. Uh, so for example, if you leverage your property to buy another property, then uh, the bank isn't going to give you money for free, right? It's going to charge you an interest rate. So the next point is when things are great, leverage ETFs look like excellent investments. Now that's true, but I'm going to talk about how mixing another leverage ETF can also make it look like an excellent investment in a downturn as well. 
Um, then he talks about how the S&P drops, if the S&P drops by 20%, a, a triple leverage ETF tracking the index is expected to fall roughly by 60%. Again, I'll talk about how you can mix other leverage ETFs to reduce this risk. And then he talks about non-leveraged uh, normal ETFs, so just a normal S&P 500 that um, it won't get you rich quick, but it won't also make you go broke quick either if it, the investment doesn't go your way. Uh, just remember guys, we're either heading to the yacht store or the welfare office. Now nothing in between. Next I want to talk about the key elements to this strategy. But before I, um, that, I want to debunk the idea that it only works in a bull market. So the first key element is mixing the three um, leveraged ETFs, TQQ or UPRO, whichever one you decide on mixing uh, with TMF. The second key element is rebalancing every quarter. Now rebalancing is very important, so make sure you listen to the very end of this video. Now let's talk about the idea that leveraged ETFs only work in the bull market. So I've brought back the chart from 2019 to 220. Um, so in early 220, which is this year, the S&P 500 dropped 34%. But both TMF and TQQ and also TMF and UPRO are up 65% and 30% respectively. So um, let's just say that this sample size is small. So I've taken a simulation from an author on the Bogleheads forum. Uh, who placed 40% UPRO and 60% TMF from January 1987 to December 2018. Now, the results would have been different for NASDAQ because of the crash in the early 2000s uh, due to the tech bubble. So it's really up to you guys um, if you want to use TQQ or UPRO as part of this strategy. I personally use UPRO. Um, I do 50% UPRO and 50% TMF. Uh, you can do further research and decide uh, to use 40% UPRO or, and 60% TMF as well. So the average KJR of this simulation was 17% compared to the S&P which was 10%. Let's look at the best year. So the best year for UPRO and TMF was 106% um, and 3745 for S&P 500. The worst year was negative 21.06% for UPRO and TMF and 37% for S&P 500. Max drawdown during these periods was uh, almost 50% for UPRO and TMF was 51%. Oh, sorry, the S&P 500 was 51%. The author also addresses the uh, dying questions, doesn't this strategy rely on the stock bull market and doesn't this strategy rely on the bond bull market? Uh, he makes a point that during January, um, in 2000 to September in 2011, uh, which was coined the lost decade when the S&P crashed twice. Uh, so again, once during the tech bubble and once during the 08 GFC, which delivered 0% re total return. Uh, but the UPRO and TMF strategy delivered 11% KHR during this period. That's impressive, right? So the basic idea is uh, in terms of risk parity. When one asset goes down, the other does not. So the second question is a reliance on the bond market. Um, he mentions that during periods of rising interest rate, it turns out that stocks tend to go up and also vice versa. If you've made it this far, feel free to go grab a snack or have a short break um, before your mind gets blown. This is the volatility chart on the drawdowns during that period. The blue line represents the leverage portfolio and the red is the S&P 500. So you can see that the blue line reaches 15 to 30 percent declines very often. So this strategy requires a pair of diamond hands. Now, if you either have paper hands or you piss yourself over a 10 percent decline, then stick to index ETFs and shut off this video. It's not for you. If you're still here, congratulations. Um, you'll be either very rich or very poor and only time will tell. Now, the question is, why three times leveraged um, and why not two times or four times leveraged? Uh, there's been some research done with historical data showing that two, ti two times to three times leverage is the Goldilocks point. Now, during 1950 and 2009, the Goldilocks point was three times and during 1885 and 2009, it was two times. Now, this piece is from uh, a Seeking Alpha article, which I'll have a link below. It explains the idea that having too little leverage, you would pretty much get destroyed by borrowing fees. And having too much leverage, 
you will get wiped out during a market crash. So that's why the Fed sets the maximum margin allowed for retail stock uh, traders at two times under regulation. But generally three times works better if you can handle the volatility. Now the first element of why mixing the leverage strategy is important and not just having 100% in TQQ or a TQQ or 100% in UPRO. Now the first reason is that the drawdowns would be super deep during um, market crashes which can result in taking decades to recover and the second question is um, what will happen if there's a market crash the strategy is intended to perform similarly to the S&P 500 on the downside and produce significant returns during the years of upside so what's the theory behind this strategy now the first is diversification S&P 500 and long-term treasuries have had a correlation of approximately zero where um, whereas the short-term treasuries have had slightly more correlation uh, with the stock market so don't try to implement this strategy with short-term treasuries second is risk parity uh, once you've decided what you want to hold um, either TQQ or UPRO with TMF you can decide on the percentage split so either 50 50 or 60 40 or another amount that you're comfortable with so the author recommends 40% uh, UPRO and 60% TMF because S&P 500 is more volatile than long-term treasuries. So the idea is to have um, less in the volatile portfolio and more in the less volatile portfolio. Now the next key element is rebalancing. Um, so this is extremely important. Uh, this, this this strategy requires quarterly rebalancing. So when the bond market goes up during the quarter, you would rebalance to buy stocks, and when the stock market goes down during the quarter, you would rebalance you would rebalance to buy bonds. Um, if you rebalance too frequently or not enough, this will diminish your returns. Now let's talk about how to rebalance because I'm sure there's going to be some people that want to know a step by step on exactly how it's done. Now let's say you bought 750 of UPRO and TMF and stocks did very well during the quarter and now you need a rebalance for the next quarter. So you will have uh, 1.5k in UPRO and 500 in TMF now. Um, if your strategy is 50-50 UPRO and TMF uh, then you'll need to have 1000 in each UPRO and TMF. So what you need to do is sell 500 of UPRO and add 500 in TMF and that's it. Uh, you leave it for the next three, three months and repeat. Um, so a key thing to note is don't forget about taxes uh, unless you want to go to jail. So the tax rate will depend on how much you've earned during the financial year. Um, and also, as you can imagine, uh, the bigger the portfolio, the more it will cost to rebalance because of taxes. So to summarize this strategy, it's very simple. Uh, it requires little to no effort. Uh, you don't have to pick any stocks yourself, um, which I guess it could become boring, but that's just how it is. Uh, there's a few options to how you want the leverage strategy to be. So it can be either 50-50 or 40-60, um, either TQQ TMF or UPRO TMF. Uh, you can even do 25-25-50, um, so TQQ, UPRO and have 50 in TMF. Remember, uh, it's important to rebalance quarterly. Um, something optional that you can fast track your journey to the yacht store is making extra contributions over time, which obviously makes a huge difference as we saw from the example earlier. So I personally have 15 to 20% of my current portfolio in leveraged ETFs, um, but you can go with the percentage that you're comfortable with. Uh, the key takeaways from this video is leverage tends to boost your KJR and uh, of course it comes with a price of volatility. So dollar cost averaging and rebalancing tends to reduce the volatility. Um, Another thing is consider taxes when rebalancing because when you're selling something for a profit, you'll have to pay taxes. Uh, this is more suited towards younger investors who have time on their side. So if you're in your 20s, 30s, or maybe even 40s, you can set aside a small amount and test your luck. Uh, the issue is that um, these days, a lot of people aren't taking enough risk to retire early. I always hear from either friends or uh, other people that I talk to, they want to retire early, but they have their savings in a 1% savings account. Like, what do you expect? Um, you know, you aren't going to be able to save your way to a million dollars without investing. 
And you know, do you think Elon made his billions using a one percent savings account? No, he risked everything he had in SpaceX and Tesla. So let's keep it real, guys. Um, I'll see you guys all at the yacht store or either the welfare office. I'm going to quickly give a brief portfolio update. Uh, the current portfolio value is at $70,477. My portfolio is currently up 8.82% in the financial year, which equates to 5.2,000 compared to the S&P 500, which is up 1.83%. So filtering for first purchase, I'm currently up 2.8k on Sizzle and 2.1k on Tesla. Thanks to having diamond hands, uh, I was able to sit through the volatility of both. Or maybe not so much Tesla, but Sizzle for sure. I also want to personally thank Elon for hanging out tendies this week as well. So uh, in terms of the other positions, Macquarie is up 1.5. Um, Facebook is up 1k. VGS is up 1.2. So that brings us almost to a total of uh, just over $10,000 in terms of open positions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video this week. Uh, if you really liked the video, please smash the thumbs up button and also to consider subscribing as well. I'll see you guys next week.